All right, now let's move on to solving our problem. So let's remind ourselves of the challenge that we had before us. It was essentially to devise an algorithm which would allow us to determine the first non-repeated character of a string. So suppose these were the characters of our string, then what we'd have to do is ex essentially examine every single character in a string and find out which one of them is non-repeated in the string. So it appears only once in the string and we'd return that character, starting from the beginning of course. Now the most obvious approach would be an exact translation of the statement of the problem. So I lay it down right here. It essentially consists of examining every single character, starting with the first character here, and once you examine a character, what you do is you compare it to all the other characters within the string. And if you cannot find any match, and therefore this character is, is not repeated in the string and is returned as the character that you are looking for. So for each character in a string, search the entire string for any repetition. If there are no repetitions, then return that character as being the first non-repeated character. So you start from the first character here and you move on to the very end doing this process. Now this is very simple to implement, but the only problem is that the efficiency of this algorithm is big O of n squared. This for loop would essentially require you to examine every single element, in the worst case scenario, every single element in the string, so that's n, and for every single element in the worst case scenario you'd be looking, comparing it to all the other elements within the string, so that's times n minus 1, and this gives you something that's big O of n squared. So we need to enhance that algorithm. Now what it turns out is that we don't really have to discard this algorithm entirely and adopt a new one. All we have to do is just enhance it. So we notice that there are two parts to this algorithm. There's the for loop, so this right here, and there's the searching step. Now we can't really do much for the for loop, but what we can do is use our computer science knowledge to improve searching. Now we've studied a lot of data structures uh, which would allow us to essentially improve our searching and make it more efficient. And this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be storing the data over which we search into a data structure which will optimize our searching. And we could do so by resorting either to binary search trees, which would reduce our search to big O of log n, or using an array. And if we are searching over uh, the index of the array, so for example, when you look up an element using the index of an array, then that lookup is big O of 1. It's a constant step lookup. So if I want the third element in an array, then that element would, I don't have to search through the entire array. I just say the third element, I take it right out. So it's a big O of 1. Or a hash, using the key as the element over which you would perform the lookup. So the hash would take your key and find your value right away. And this is a big O of 1 in the average case. It could, in the worst case scenario, be a big O of n, but in the average case, it's a big O of 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use either an array or a hash, making sure that what we're looking over is either the index or the key. And we'll see that in detail in the code. But right now, let's just look at it in theoretical terms. Now, what are we going to do? We will essentially use the same algorithm, modified slightly, so we could enhance the searching step. How are we going to do that? We're going to be building that new data structure in the first step. So in our first for loop, instead of actually performing the search, we're going to be building and preparing and setting the stage for the second step, the search step. So what do we do? We're going to build this new data structure. Suppose we decided to adopt the array. So we're going to build this new data structure where the indexes of the array will be taken to be the characters, all the possible characters that it could appear in the string. So suppose all the possible characters were simply uh, the characters in the alphabet, so we would have something like this, A, B, C, D, E, F. And in, in Java, actually, you could use uh, character, you could, you could easily uh, switch between characters and integers. And this would allow you to basically uh, use the, the character itself as the index of your array. This is just an example. You could use it as a key in a hash, and we'll see that too. And and uh, so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to be counting the number of times every single character occurs in our string, and we're going to be storing their occurrences right here. So we're building this data structure of char character count, and we'll see how this is going to help us.